Hey guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at a few different types of compact fluorescent lamps. We'll be looking at how uh, the construction has changed over the years. On the left we've got this uh, Philips Earthlight. Uh, I don't remember when we got this, it's been so long, but I think it was around 2000 or 2001. And this has been in a pretty harsh service at the bottom of a stairwell, turned on and off for short, uh, short periods. And it's only just recently burned out, I think, uh, in late 2013, so it's been in service for something like 12 years. And on the right we have some more modern lamps. These are uh, actually not sure what brand this is at all, it doesn't say. It's just some no-name thing and this other uh, green light uh, brand lamp. And these have, were, not, were uh, not in service for anywhere near as long as the Philips lamp, but these burned out way earlier. Hopefully we can take a look at the, the construction differences and see why modern CFLs uh, don't last anywhere near as long as the old ones. These lamps usually come apart pretty easy. You just have to cut around the outside of the ballast and then it uh, pulls apart. We can definitely see the older lamp. Actually, the ballast actually looks a lot simpler in this one compared to the, uh, uh, the modern ones, which are much more uh, crammed and have a much more, uh, I guess, Chinese uh, bodgy style of construction. Down on the bottom of the board, uh, bottom of the hole there, let's see if we can turn this up, there's a board that I think has two diodes and a resistor, and I think those diodes form part of a uh, voltage doubler to, uh, to, produ uh, to produce voltage on these uh, two series capacitors. So this actually runs, uh, has a voltage doubled input. And these old, uh, the, those are the newer ones, uh, actually don't have that, they just have simple rectified mains. I'm actually quite impressed with a lot of aspects of the construction on this lamp. Um, if you look at how the uh, the tube, uh, how the fluorescent tube is actually connected to the board, the wires from the coming out of the tube go through um, go through these little holes here in this uh, board, and then wires are soldered onto this onto the uh, onto the driver board. And both go through this plastic piece, and then little uh, brass pieces are inserted in this way to uh, to join those wires together. This is very good for manufacturing, easy to assemble. These ones, this one's just soldered on, uh, the wires are just soldered onto the board and then it just sort of pushes in like that. This one is, uh, the wires come up uh, around the side of the board and then are sort of wire wrapped around pins that are soldered in. One thing that puzzles me about this lamp is why they didn't make the actual base part uh, rectangular or square, because the driver board is uh, rectangular and so is effectively the, the base profile of the, uh, of the tube. They could have made the base somewhat smaller. This Phillips lamp driver basically consists of a, a half bridge of, with two transistors, an inductor, uh, two filter capacitors operating as a voltage doubler, a few other passives used in the uh, output. On the underside, there's a uh, UBA 2021 uh, compact fluorescent driver IC, all made by Philips. Uh, a few, uh, and mainly just other uh, passive components f uh, to operate that. The data sheet for the driver IC has this schematic, uh, and it pretty much matches what the, what's on this board, of course. Uh, L2 on the schematic is obviously the, uh, uh, the main inductor here, uh, two transistors. Uh, this actually has a high side driver, so the, uh, the FETs are uh, driven pretty nicely. The CFL driver chip also controls preheat of the uh, filaments in, in the tube. That is one of the main reasons I think this uh, lamp lasts, lasts longer than the others, because it preheats the uh, filaments before applying current uh, to the actual, uh, uh, starting the, arc, the discharge in the lamp. From what I've read, that, uh, that significantly increases the life of the lamp uh, by, by reducing stress on startup. That's probably why this worked so well in the uh, application it was used in, which was in the uh, uh, in a stairwell where it was operated for uh, short t uh, short times and cycled on an awful lot. Of course, all this quality meant these uh, lamps were extremely expensive. I believe this uh, Philips lamp initially sold for something like twenty dollars back in uh, uh, when we got it. And looking at the date code on the chip, it's uh, 9901, so that supports this being made somewhere around uh, late 99 or 2000. It's a really, really old lamp. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. Uh, it looks like there's one, there's one little issue I noticed with their design is when this board is pressed in, uh, this resistor here, see it's burnt up, actually comes very close to this pin. I'm wondering if that might be 
why this lamp failed, although it does have the characteristic of um, the burnt out filament here. And of course, to keep the costs down on modern lamps, they had to do away with a lot of the luxuries, like um, this one has high quality uh, Rubicon brand caps in it, and these are just, uh, of course, one hung low. Uh, what is this? Sam Samwa, I think, and this one is uh, the uh, Ashi brand. Uh, one thing I do like on these ones is they, um, for safe space saving on the board, they raise the cap up, but that does have the advantage of putting it up in the base, which is probably the coolest portion of the lamp, so it helps somewhat with light, with uh, capacitor life. This is also, this is rated uh, 105 degrees C, and these ones are uh, are only 85C, but I think because the lamp is so much bigger, uh, it stays uh, quite a bit cooler. Yeah, this is a, this is a 13 watt lamp, and it's much much uh, larger than the. Uh, sorry, this is 15 watt lamp. This is much much larger than these 13 watt uh, spiral lamps. There's actually another benefit of this. It's a bit more efficient because uh, the spiral lamps, when they're coated uh, coated with phosphor, gravity pulls the phosphor to uh, to one side, so basically the bottom of the curve has too much and the top has too little, so the efficiency is reduced slightly. And these ones, when they coat them with phosphor, it's uh, more e because the the tubing is uh, vertical for most of its run. It's coated evenly around the whole side. So if you if you have a fixture that will take these uh, this style of lamp with vertical tubes, get that because it's a little bit more efficient. Or of course, uh, at this point in time, LEDs are probably a better option. Although modern LEDs cost about as much as these high quality CFLs did, but at least back in the day you got what you paid for. You got a lamp that lasted, actually lasted 10 or 15 years, unlike these modern ones which you're lucky to get uh, uh, six months or a year out of. Of course with the inevitable cost reduction we're now stuck with uh, ballasts like these, which are basically self-oscillating uh, circuits based on a couple of transistors. You see the two transistors here. This one, they've actually gone down to a uh, TO3 package transistors for uh, switching full mains voltage. And of course, these run very hot. They often the ballasts fail uh, in these. The, these old lamps, it seems that the actual lamps were the common thing to fail. And of course, because these run on simple rectified mains, and this runs on uh, rectified and doubled mains, the stress on the transistors is greatly reduced on this one. These ones need much lar uh, more larger transistors or uh, uh, run much hotter. If you want to take a look at what the schematic looks like for these types of ballasts, I've included a link in the video description to a site where a uh, guy has reverse engineered a whole bunch of different types of uh, CFL ballasts. Uh, if only they made things as good as they did back in the day. Anyway, I hope you found this video on compact fluorescent lamps interesting. Thanks for watching!